How many times have you asked yourself, why won't this rifle shoot? I thought this rifle was gonna shoot great. I've got the right ammo. I think it's a great rifle. I think I'm doing the right things. I can't get this rifle to shoot. Have you ever run into that with your customers? <laughs> All the time. People you shoot yep. with? This is Gordy Gritters. Yeah, Gordy, it. thank you for joining me here on the channel. Gordy runs Gordy's Precision and the Extreme Accuracy Institute. Gordy's Precision is your gunsmithing business. Right. Extreme Accuracy Institute is the school I'm at right now. It's Gordy's teaching class where you can come and learn hands-on how to build precision rifles, how to tune up rifles, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I thought this would be a great topic to talk about because everybody's had that bad day at the range, that extreme disappointment, right? And what I want to ask you is what are kind of what is your order of operations in troubleshooting some bad, bad groups that either you've been shooting or one of your customers has been shooting. Yeah, and I get this, and I've you know, I've been gunsmith for 33 years. I'm most of that time has been devoted towards accuracy shooting it. So I deal with con mm -hmm. customers constantly having accuracy issues and accuracy problems, and that's it, such a common thing across the board. And talking to other gunsmiths around the country, it's it's it, it's, it's universal mm -hmm. because people like accuracy. Us guys, especially you know <laughs> the, the, the you know guys, women, whatever shooters, we we like accuracy a, a bunch of us and most of us, and uh, that's that's just a universal thing. Mm -hmm. So I get I'll just as an example, I'll, I'll just use as an example. A customer calls up says, "Hey, I've got a problem with the gun. It's not shooting as well as what I thought it was going to be. It's either a factory gun or it's one you had somebody build or or whatever." It has a problem with the gun. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to guy and find out a lot. I'm going to ask him a lot of questions because mm -hmm. I've got to determine from this a little bit. And, and and if he brings the gun in or sends it to me, I'm going to then I'm going to delve into the gun itself. But I'm going to first go over a lot of things. First off is is I don't I don't know is he is he loading his ammo right? Is he what what for ammo ammunition is he using? Is he and I'm going to talk to him a lot about especially if he's a hand loader. I'm going to talk to him a lot about his techniques of this and what he's doing. How he or does for things. instance, you mentioned today the bullets are too heavy for the twist rate. Yeah, he's got exactly. That's one of them. Is what recipe what bullet, for disaster? What bullets are you running? What, yep. What's the twist rate again? All that stuff. All that kind of stuff. Sometimes you can kind of iron out a problem there. Mm -hmm. uh, so even over the phone, how are you handling the gun and shooting the gun? I know I've had one customer recently that he, he's had a, a light shooting light recoiling gun that was shot a little bug hole. He was really happy with it. He just had a custom 300 WSM built with a great, I mean, it's a great stock, except it did not fit the type of shooting he was doing. He started telling to me about all the kind of problems he was having and, and stuff like that. Well, he was letting that gun jump around so much and the way the stock was shaped, it wasn't conducive to, to shooting like that. And he was getting inch and a half groups, inch and three quarter groups, but very, very, very unhappy with the gun. and. And after in talking with him and, and stuff like that, I, I had him hold the gun differently. And, and instead of doing it on the sandbags the way he's doing it, he was more holding it in his hand, but he support his hand with the sandbags and, and just had him try some different things. But he called back later, I got cell phone pictures of <laughs> teeny tiny little bug hole groups that he was shooting now, just, just a gun handling mm -hmm. problem with mm -hmm. the way he was handling things was, was so wrong for that type of a stock and that type of a gun. So a lot of times you can iron things out that way. When it comes down to the gun itself, that's where I come into play more often. I'll either have them bring it in or send it to me. If there's a question on the ammunition or the, or the especially the, the reloading, I'll have them send some fire brass, have some, some brass, some ammo he's loaded or size, so I can compare. I can, I can tell from that what he's, how he's setting his die. Is he pushing the shoulders back five, mm -hmm. ten, twenty thousandths or whatever? Is it die is completely incompatible with his cartridge? Uh, where's his seating depth? I can, I can tell an awful lot from his, from his ammo. Mm -hmm. what's, what's going on and, and is that part of the problem? Again, with the bullet, is the bullet weight correct for the twist rate he's running, things like that. But then you get into the gun itself, then I've got it. It's an evaluation form that I use, and I go through this. And I've done it for years. Just a form that I developed that, that I can go through, and I can document every part of this gun. That when I'm all done with it, instead of guessing, yeah, I think it needs to be bedded. Well, you spend a bunch of money bedding the gun. Well, does it shoot? Does it not shoot? Mm -hmm. Well, if the bedding's not the problem, you just wasted a bunch of your customers' money. And uh, so I can go through and just document everything. And I've got a you know, a copy of the form here and you just kind of just go down through it quick. Sure. You know, first off, check yeah. his headspace. Where's the headspace at? Is, is yeah. that way off? That's not a huge accuracy part of it there unless you're running factory ammo or the first firing of a piece of brass. And after that, where's he setting his dies compared to where the shoulder is in the gun? Mm -hmm. So I just, just a quick headspace check, twist rate. What's the twist rate of his barrel? Then I go into the bore scope. I'm a, you know, I got my Hawkeye bore scope and I can tell so much from a bore scope what's going on. Is the barrel completely shot out? 
Is there mm -hmm. all kinds of fouling built up in this barrel? Is there, is there other issues in, there in the barrel that I can find? So I can tell that. How straight is the chamber to the bore? You can mm -hmm. see that in the bore scope. The, uh, then I can slug the barrel, do, a, do an evaluation by, by pushing lubricated lead slugs back and forth to the barrel. You can tell extremely slight variations in the barrel. Well, if I get a barrel that that's opens up toward the muzzle end, that thing's not gonna shoot good. Mm -hmm. And it just won't. A lot of these, we talked about that with the muzzle brakes. A lot of barrels uh, are, are prone to, especially with a larger diameter barrel, and you take off quite a bit of metal at the muzzle to put a muzzle brake on, you're taking away the support for the bore, so the stresses that are inherent in the steel itself opens up, so you get a, a big bulge mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. If your bit that you cut the tenon with before you thread that muzzle is dull, like the shoulder of the muzzle brake, a lot of times you'll feel a very tight spot, just a real tight constriction right the, where the shoulder of the muzzle brake is, you'll feel that inside the bore that has transmitted those stresses through. If their if their if their lathe bit was dull, you'll feel yeah. that, and that'll and that's so the bullet goes through a tight spot, which squeezes it down, then it's loose from there, and it doesn't shoot as well. Can, so, because you're saying you can feel one ten thousandth oh yeah, inch oh yeah. of variation in 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 bore which, diameter. Which so slight, I can yep. I can feel you know loose spots, tight spots that were the bore the surface of the barrel is just rough. With, you get that mm -hmm. a lot with factory barrels and stuff like mm -hmm. that. The barrel is just rough. Well, that you can feel that when your when your slug is pushing through rough, well, the bullets are doing the same thing, making that barrel vibrate more, mm -hmm. and so forth. So then check the crown. You know if if you've got ammo with it, check the seating depth. Uh, is the muzzle brake fitted properly? Is it straight to the bore? Is it is that have sufficient bore clearance? Is the bullet you have bullet strikes inside the muzzle brake? You check that out. Mm -hmm. The bolt, how much bolt lug contact? You got lug contact on, on both or all three of your lugs, or only on one where that you're where you're flexing the axle when it when it sh when it shoots. Is that is the bolt handle touching the stock? Uh, bolt play, how much bolt play is, is in that action? Is that that mm -hmm. will directly affect the bolt lugs? So part of the time it'll touch, part of the time it won't touch, or or, or generally just. Doesn't it's touch basically at all. able to rattle slightly while yep. that recoil impulse yep. is going so, through. And that accuracy comes from minimizing as, as much flexing and vibration mm -hmm. as what you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And could, you can't get rid of all of them, so controlling what's left to do it absolutely the same shot after shot after shot that gun acts and, 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 and flexes and vibrates the same. Mm -hmm. So the, the looser things are, the more variance you got in there, which affects accuracy. Mm -hmm. Uh, then, then we get into our, our you know, our, our ignition issue, or how much firing pin travel we got compared to spring and spring pressure, and how much ignition energy do we got? So that, that's a, a bit, pretty big factor. Bedding, you know, you put a dial indicator on the bedding, you stress, you know, affect your stress, loosen and tighten the action screw with mm -hmm. the indicator on top of the barrel and beside the barrel. You can check bedding stress. Mm -hmm. What pull it apart? What does the bedding look like? A lot of these chassis and stocks and you know, all different types of things. You can see where sometimes the recoil lug is only hitting on one side. Well, every time you fire, it's got to kick the barrel to the side and get, get side variation. Yep. Or high or low, and it'll get, you know, vertical variation. Real loose and sloppy in the, in the, in the, action area of the stock, yep. but it doesn't lay good in the stock when you got room for every time it fires at, at the joint, it moves and sits differently every time. So I'll check the bedding. At the barrel channel, they often are not bedded or, or free floated nearly enough. And you look and you can look in there sometime and you'll see shiny spots where the barrels hit the stock every single yep. shot. Well, that's, that's, that's not good. Even though the outdated uh, oh, yeah. dollar bill trick passes that test. Yeah, right? add, you know, stack a number of dollar bills together, you got about the right amount of clearance, but the old dollar right. bill down the barrel trick is not nearly enough clearance in most cases. Yep. So, yeah, especially I, with some of these cheap stocks that are out yeah. there that are real flimsy and flexible. Well, you can load the bipod and see it flex yeah. and contact and yeah. it's, yeah. Yeah, so problem. just just a whole number of that, and then you get into the trigger and the scope and 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 all that stuff, you know. So I just so I can go through a whole a whole evaluation form here, and now mm -hmm. I can go down the side and I put a little check mark by the problem areas. So now I can look at that particular gun, and okay, and I can I can document exactly that's a problem, that's a problem, that's a problem. And I can see exactly what's going on with this gun, mm -hmm. and then we can address those problems and deal with it. So a lot of times you can save a whole bunch of money from not having to do you know do nearly as much stuff as you thought you had to because these are some serious problems we can just identify and direct directly address those problems and take care of the issue. And don't sometimes you, you gotta you do a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> if only your auto mechanic was so thorough yeah. rather than just replacing parts willy-nilly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's 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 expensive just to replace parts yep. and stuff like that. But at the same time, if you need a barrel, now we know. Let's not spend yep. any money on this gun. You just waste a whole bunch of money unless you're gonna replace the barrel or something like that. Yeah, yep. you know, just all different ways. Of, but this is so beneficial because now that particular gun, I can document everything on it and tell exactly what's going mm -hmm. on with that gun. So and what's really cool about this list is it, you need specialized skills or specialized tools for some of this, but some of this you could do at home oh, on absolutely. your own. Gun, absolutely. Right? Like Ron from Benchmark Barrels mm -hmm. told me about when you're tightening that front action screw, if you have your mm -hmm. rear action screw relatively loose. You're just tightening it and holding the fore end of the stock and the barrel together. And if you feel the two moving with respect to each other, it's a simplified form of the test mm -hmm. that you do. Then you know you have a stock bedding problem, whether it's been bedded or not. If it's moving, 
you know things are going to be rocking and rolling while you're shooting. Mm -hmm. The slugging of the barrel is also something that you could do if you have some lead, uh, lead bullets and tap them from both sides. You know, it's, it's not a super simple thing to do, but it's also not rocket science. So if, if you're in a remote area, you don't have a gunsmith around, you know, these are some things that you could very easily track. Some of them just visually, mm -hmm. right, to see what's going on. And then you have all of the, uh, the scope mounts, right? That would be another mm -hmm. first thing I would check is I've had scope mounts. Scope mounts loose. Oh, yeah. Shoot loose within all the time. 20, 20 rounds and uh, maybe a scope that won't uh, hold zero. Mm -hmm. Under recoil, that's a little bit harder to diagnose. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so don't lose hope, right? Uh, work with a competent gunsmith. Maybe work through some of these checks yourself. I find it helps to have a structured and systematic approach, whether it be load development, diagnosing some of these accuracy problems, you know, improving your skills. You want to make sure that uh, you take on one variable at a time and maybe go through a whole less list of checks. You know, when it comes to load development or validating your ammunition, mm -hmm. change your powder charge, but don't be changing your seating depth until you're, you know, done mm -hmm. with one set of tests. And that way you can... Yeah, several years ago, we you know, we'd film, filmed some videos and one of them is on just evaluating rifles yep. for accuracy problems. That's stuff that homeowners can do. And I, I, you know, a lot of people get that video and, and can work, you know, fix their own, you know, their, you know, their own guns at home and, and do it themselves. And gunsmiths, of course, use it to, yep. in their professions. But, and if you're but, but so that, much of this stuff can be, can be done with, with, by, by, a, by, by, the, by the gun owner himself. Yeah, yeah. And if you're interested in doing that, there will be a link in the video description to Gordy's DVD. That's your DVD, mm -hmm. right, that you've got that's mm -hmm. available for purchase. And yeah. you can learn yourself, which is always good. <laughs> yeah, a lot of do. I deal with do it yourselfers all the time, and and it, I love it. You know, because I'm a do it yourselfer big big time, and and uh, so many of my of my customers are do it yourselfers themselves, mm -hmm. and and people that I deal with, and you know, I just love helping people like that learn how to do this, do this stuff, and and they they enjoy doing it. You know, it's, it's so it's, enjoyable. It definitely is. It's very fulfilling <clears throat> to get a result where you once had a frustrating mm -hmm. range trip, you know, to make it to the top of that mountain for your own goals. So here's a question for you all. What kind of problems have you been having with accuracy? What kind of rifle, what kind of cartridge? Let us know what problems are going on for you and we'll start a little bit of a discussion around some of those things. Gordy, thank you for coming on the channel yet again. It's been a privilege to take your class this week. If you're interested in Gordy's Precision Rifle Builder class under the Extreme Accuracy Institute, there's also gonna be a link there. You can come for a whole week. You can work hands-on with Gordy. Gordy also goes out for private lessons mm -hmm. for institutions and individuals. It's a great way to save time and money because yeah. as someone who's self-taught in, in, in a lot of things, you know, it would have helped me a lot earlier on. But here I am. I'm going to be transferring these skills. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because I'm going to be breaking down some of these troubleshooting steps in individual videos and into some of the stories that I'm doing. Don't forget, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.